Good Lord, Joseph, what happened to Rand Paul? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. Uh, you were the one that just uh, told me about it. All right. Well, okay. For those of you who are not versed in anything and have no idea what's happening in your country, which is probably a good bit, uh, Rand Paul is the son of Ron Paul. He's a libertarian leading conservative um, from Kentucky. He's elected 3 January in 2011. And for a while, he was kind of the star child of the libertarian movement. There really aren't any really libertarian leaning senators in there. You could argue DeMint, but I'd say he's more of a strong conservative. Ted Cruz is kind of a question mark, but Rand Paul was always the go-to guy for libertarians. And as you well know, he stood there for 12 hours and 52 minutes on the Senate floor to filibuster the drone use policy of President Obama, speculating that the words and the verbiage used in the initial bill and plan for drone strikes did not, did not eliminate the use of, of the drones against American citizens that were non-combatants on U.S. soil. So he stood there for nearly 13 hours to make his point and was supported by several other U.S. senators, even some Democrats, who stood up to even talk to him, whether they were supporting or not. And to be honest, it really moved me. I think it moved a lot of people. He was trending on Twitter. I mean, no U.S. senator trends on Twitter unless you got caught in an affair. Globally. Exactly. Turning globally on Twitter, Rand Paul was, for this, for this amazing genius move on the Senate floor. And I thought it was very principled. He looked very passionate. And then today on Cavuto, he turns around and says that he was – after the, the attack in Boston, he does a 180, does a turncoat, and says that he was never against drone strikes and uses the example – that he would be fine with drones flying around trying to catch imminent threats. For instance, if a guy robs a liquor store, walks out with a gun and $50, he doesn't care if a drone kills him or the police. What in the world is that? Talk about a non-combatant. What are your thoughts? It's just making me angry talking about it. Uh, I thought it was <clears throat> totally inconsistent. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest, because mm – -hmm. Like you said, he spent almost 13 hours filibustering passionately, articulately, and I thought it was – I watched every minute of it, to, to be honest, and I, I loved it. I, I honestly thought, hey, he's starting to show his libertarian streaks. This is going to be great. Um, now, I'm still trying to I, – I, I don't know what to make of this because the, the it really does fly in the face of – of his position, his previous position, it just doesn't make sense because who, you know, many politicians flip flop, but few politicians engage in an old style filibuster uh, for damn near 13 hours and then say what he said today in Cavuto. That just it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you know, I need to watch the video again and see maybe, you know, if there were some nuance. If you know, if he was talking about surveillance and maybe like the drone surveilling the dude or whatever outside of the liquor store, it was the uh, the example or the analogy that he gave. And I'm, I don't know, but it just seemed really, really weak, and it seemed uh, to totally contradict everything this guy's been preaching about. And uh -huh. you know, uh, totally off putting. To all of the you know libertarian leaning Republicans and <clears throat> staunch libertarians that support him, I mean I, it just it doesn't make sense. So I don't know if the the, the party politics are are finally getting to him uh, or what. It just it doesn't make sense because you know he saw that he, he that he trended globally for two days. It wasn't just one day. He 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 trended globally for two days. You know, like all over the world, like hashtag like stand with Rand was the number one tweet and hashtag for two mm -hmm. days all over the yeah. world. I mean, mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, he had bipartisan support. He had senators from the Democratic Party showed up. He uh, they they, sh they showed up. He had uh, even congressmen that couldn't participate, but they actually but they showed up as well and just stood mm -hmm. in the back. Yep. So he had bipartisan support. He saw, and if you watch the uh, Ben Swan interview, or mm -hmm. not even interview, but the Ben Swan piece, uh, reality check that he did, 
and mm-hmm. he broke it down very, very um, succinctly. And he said, you know, he, he analyzed everything. He said, look, there's a 50 point swing on this issue. <clears throat> the use of drones against Americans uh, or against U.S. citizens, even overseas, you know, he said, and he, he really he he showed that there was a 50 point swing. So obviously, Rand Paul is an intelligent. He's an intelligent guy, and I'm sure he has, um, a, a, you know, I'm sure he's very well staffed, and everybody is telling him, you know, what's going on. But uh, it just it doesn't make sense to me because he knows. The he he knows whose co- coattails he wrote in on, and he knew and he knows what like the support the support that he garnered after that filibuster uh, was basically libertarian leaning Republicans and staunch libertarians, and now to come out and do this it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I mean, I guess it makes sense if he's just selling out to the machine, uh, which the hardcore libertarians have said from the beginning, with him endorsing Romney. <clears throat> but I, I don't know. What do you think? What's your particular? Uh, yeah, well, I, I didn't think he saw it. I know a lot of big L libertarians argue that he was a sellout from the get-go <laughs> for Romney. Personally, I think he just supported the lesser of two evils like most guys did. I mean, I didn't think Gary Johnson stood a chance, and so I wasn't going to waste my vote on Gary Johnson, also because I didn't stand with a lot of things he stood for. But, you know, so I can respect that. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to sit there and say that was bad, but this is definitely a representation of a turncoat for me. I have little faith left in this man at all. Um, talk about a guy who used to talk about cutting numerous agencies that no one even dare touch. We're talking about Department of Education, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Energy, Defense, Housing and Urban Development. I mean, this guy said he uh, cut food stamps by 30% and then proposed a budget, intended to, a, a budget plan to intended to balance the budget in five years. I mean, this guy was a star and really, truly, probably – uh, presidential material. I mean, everyone everyone was saying after that that stand with Rand thing when he did the filibuster, saying this is essentially the beginning of the 2016 GOP primaries, which I have to agree that probably was. Now he's cut himself down because if he even if he ever thinks about running, he'll play that clip and show his staunch support for freedom and protection and security. And at this very next moment, his counterpart will put out put out an ad saying, "Look at this! Look what he said the next day. He's a flip flopper." You know, we talk about Romney flip flop. At least he flip flops every few years. Ron Paul flip flop. Rand Paul, uh, that matter, flip flops every five weeks. It just disgusts me. He's lost my support. I don't think there's a chance for him to get me back. I really don't. And it, it really, it really bothers me a lot. I just don't see why he changed it. I'm, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I have two. Regarding what he's saying, I have no idea. I mean, you, you called me tonight, and I had no idea what had taken place, and. You sent me the link to the video, and I watched it. I don't, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, either he's he's just sold out essentially, mm-hmm. which makes no sense because he knows where his base lies. I mean, why do you think Romney lost? You know, it's it's not because every Republican didn't get out and go vote. You know, I'm sure that was some of it. But there's a huge contingency or a huge contingent of, of libertarian leaning Republicans and straight up freaking hardcore libertarians that mm-hmm. sat this one out. I did. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I did. I I voted I, I voted for Johnson. I didn't I didn't even agree with everything, but I was trying I was hoping that we would reach that five percent threshold where we could get enough <clears> – <throat> we would break that threshold and get congressional uh, funding or what, whatever it is, you know, the mm-hmm. funding, and, and basically become recognized as a third party yes. and garner so that we could yes. at least compete in the arena. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did that because mm-hmm. I, I, I'm done with the choosing between, uh, yeah. you know, lesser evils. I'm just – I'm not going to do it anymore. I just philosophically am opposed to it. I think mm-hmm. that's well, part of the reason why we're in the mess we're mm-hmm. in in this country is that everyone says the same thing. Like, oh, he and, and I guess that's going to be what our comments are. Is that if people li- what listen to this video, I want you guys to comment. Tell us what you think about it. What do you feel about Rand Paul now? So comment, subscribe to the channel for some more interesting discussions on societal and political issues, and let us know what you think. Do you still support Rand Paul? Do you still stand with Rand? Or do you think he's a turncoat? Joseph and I are undecided. All right, thanks for listening.